to Mile High Speed, everyone. This video, we're going to be talking about proper gear mesh. Let's get stuck in on setting proper gear mesh. Check the timestamps of the video. You can jump around and get to the parts that you want to get to that are meaningful to you. I do encourage you to watch the whole thing if you can. There's a lot of information in here, and information is power. Uh, in the video, we're going to talk about different ways you can set gear mesh. Uh, what is a proper gear mesh? What does it look like? What does it feel like? What is the concept behind a, a proper gear mesh? And hopefully that all helps you enjoy the hobby a little bit more. So let's get stuck in on gear mesh. Okay, guys, let's just talk about what you're trying to accomplish with the right gear mesh. And that'll help you since it's kind of a, a feel thing. It's more of a feel you're not going to use your visual as much as you are your feel and your hearing to set your gear mesh. It helps to know what we're trying to accomplish. So I'm going to use my fingers to try and help convey this concept as best I can. This is real high tech here. Um, this just represents one tooth sliding into another tooth. And what we're trying to do is get that gear to sit in there. And as you start the rotation, it just wants to push the other gear along. You don't want it to bang into it and slap it and hit it, you want it to just push it in rotation. The other thing you don't want is to jam this gear too far in horizontally and create a wedge, um, both in a horizontal direction and at the tips here, you don't want to wedge it in there and create friction. So on if you're too loose, so that's too tight. If you're too loose, you're out here and this gear is banging and slapping into the gears and it basically just chisels out the side of the outgoing and on the incoming, it chisels it out on the incoming and that wears your gears. So the ideal mesh is somewhere about in between where you've, you have wedged the gear in and then you back it out just enough to where it's free and it has a little bit of rattle and the tiniest little bit of movement. And that takes all that friction out from the wedge, but it leaves it engaged and allows the gear to push all along the strength and thickness of the gear above it. Okay, everyone, there are many methods uh, that you can use for setting your gear mesh. I'm going to show you three here that I use that work good for me, and I use them in combination with each other sometimes. Um, there's a bunch more online, so check those out uh, from other people. There's all kinds of ways to do this, but... Here are some common ones. One's called the paper method, and you're gonna use a standard slip of notebook paper jam between the pinion and the spur in order to help you set your mesh. Um, use the timestamps, skip forward, and you can see how that method works. The next one is called, well, it doesn't really have a name, I'm just naming it something stupid here. I would say it's the flick, listen, and feel method. Um, and you're gonna flick the spur and listen for clicks and rattles. Again, check the timestamps and you can see how that works. And the last one is sort of a, an unusual one where I elevate the car. I actually get the car rolling and push the pinion into the spur until I get an awful noise and then back it up right where I want it. Um, this one only works with uh, certain cars that have this kind of setup, um, but all three work really well. Um, review them all. Pick which one you think works best for you, and hopefully it helps you get good gear mesh. Okay, the other method you might hear about is called the paper method. So you're gonna take some standard notebook paper and you're gonna put it in between and press your pinion gear into the paper. And the theory here, and I don't have this motor tightened down so I might not be able to pull this off, is that when you pull this paper, piece of paper out, if you tear it, then you've pushed it in too tight. If you pull it out and it just kind of slides out and the paper doesn't really have much going on with it, then you're too loose. If you got it right and you pull it, the gears should make an imprint on the paper of the gears without ripping the paper. Here's a methodology for setting your gear mesh that has a real technical name to it. I've just named it the flick, listen, and feel. And that's because you are going to flick once you get your gear, once you set it, you're going to flick your spur gear. You're going to listen for a little rattle or a little click. 
and you're going to feel for a tiny bit of movement in that spur gear that indicates that it's not wedged, that its teeth are not wedged by the pinion. So let's see if we can get that to happen here. I'm going to take that pinion gear and wedge it into the spur, and you're going to see when I flick, nothing happens. No sound, no movement. That's because I'm too tight. So now I'm going to try and back that off, and I'm going to show you too loose. That's too loose. Why? Because those teeth of the pinion gear are whacking the spur gear, and the spur gear is really moving rotationally. So that whacking of those teeth, as we discussed, are going to wear them out. Okay, so that's too much movement. So you set it in closer. And right about there is perfect. So you can hear that clicking and you can feel the tiniest bit of movement in the spur, which is telling me I haven't wedged those teeth, but it's loose, so it's loose enough, but I'm not so loose that it's going to be whacking it. Once you get this, now what you want to do is rotate it to various locations, because as much as you want it to be, these are not manufactured perfectly, and as you spin it, things are always going to be slightly different shape different sizes, and you're going to get different meshes. So what you're looking for here is to find a point that hopefully hasn't wedged itself. You're looking for the farthest in point. Now, one thing I would recommend is on a system like this, where you haven't fully assembled the system, I would always default to letting it be a little looser than, I, than perfect. And that is because we still have to put the cover on this, which is going to affect how this spur gear sits when its bearing comes onto this end. And then even after that, you've got to click this whole module into place and seat this spur gear onto the input gear of the differential, which is also going to affect how this spur gear sits. So as a default, I think it's better with these in order to accommodate those variables to make this a little bit looser than ideal. If you've got a car like this, um, these are the best setups because you can get amazing gear mesh. And the way I do that is I loosen everything up just a smidge so that I can move this motor, but not very easy. It's kind of sticky, so I'm just moving it a little bit. And then I hook a battery up, turn everything on, and take your steering trim and turn your steering trim until your wheels and tires start rotating. It's probably best to take your wheels and tires off to do this, but... Just get, get the car moving on its own so that both your hands are free. Um, with that throttle trim, will allow the car to spin. And then take your motor and push it into the spur. And you're going to hear an awful sound. That means it's too tight and it's grinding. But your car's not going to be going very fast, so it can take it for just a minute. Push it in, let it grind, and then pull it back until that sound releases and everything sounds better. Now don't go too far because you'll be able to pull this motor back for quite a while and it's going to sound fine until the pinion actually releases from the spur. You don't want it out that far. You want it all, all the way up right where the sound transition happens. So push it against the spur, let it have that terrible sound for a second, and then just slide it. And the moment that sound changes, that's the perfect gear motion. Okay, I'm just going to show you this live real quick, how this method works. Uh, I've got an Allen wrench preset in there. I've got the car turned on. Everything's good to go. We're going to take that throttle trim and just turn it up. You don't have to go very far. Just get the car moving. Now I'm going to shove that motor in so that the pinion gear goes into the spur and makes a terrible sound. And I'm actually going to do it way too hard so that you can for sure hear it and then I'll back it off and right when the sound changes is where I want to be. Okay. And then I'll tighten that down. And that should be a really good gear mesh. So take the throttle trim back off. Turn off the car. And then what I want to do is just double check my work by using the flick and feel method. And I'm going to flick that spur gear with the Allen wrench while holding the pinion tight. I'm going to listen for the click and the movement. And 
hopefully you can hear that. It's loose. It's not loose. It's just... It's got that slight rattle in the, in the uh, spur gear that I want that tells me I haven't jammed the pinion into the spur. And then you'll just rotate it a couple times and check it at various locations. And that should result in a really nice gear mesh. Hey, hope you liked the video. Hope it helps you out. If so, throw a like on there and check out some of the other stuff we have on the channel.